All right. Um, so I am a climate scientist, um, and I study how extreme weather events around the world are affected by human-caused climate change. I'm also a person that values every other life on this planet, and I believe you do too, which is why I'm here to tell you how climate change affects us, each one of us, today, and what we should do about it. So I'm sure you'll all agree with me when I say that 2020 has been a memorable year. COVID-19, um, global protests for a more equitable society, and several broken climate records. 2020 started out with fires burning across Australia. The media was full of these heart-wrenching images of koala bears being rescued by firefighters. In fact, the Australian fires affected 3 billion animals in Australia and, and destroyed their habitat. A few, year, a few months later, we had, uh, we had fires, uh, the record large fires burning across California, Oregon, and Washington. These fires uh, have already killed over 40 people. Uh, they've destroyed towns. The towns of Talent and Phoenix were uh, pretty severely destroyed during, during these fires. Uh, 500,000 people uh, were evacuated during the fires in Oregon, just in the state of Oregon. And these impacts continue while the wildfire season has still not ended. Both these fires were associated with record heat and drought, both of which were made worse by climate change. Across the world, um, where I grew up, uh, one, of the, one of the strongest cyclones hit India and Bangladesh um, earlier this year. Closer to home here now, we have uh, a, 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 the strong, one of the strongest hurricanes, one of the, the first major hurricane of the Atlantic um, hurricane season this year hit Louisiana. It was the strongest um, storm to hit Louisiana in the last uh, hundred something years. Um, and so these, these, um, both these storms are also made worse by climate change. We know that a warmer atmosphere can hold more moisture and that additional moisture is fuel for these storms. And so climate change has had an influence on, on these events that we've experienced in 2020. So this is a story of 2020, right? But this could have been the story of any of the last five years. 2020 is the sixth consecutive year on record when the US has experienced at least 10 events that have resulted in over 10, $1 billion in losses. Four decades ago, each year had about three such events. And now in the last five years, we've had on average 13 such events. So each of these extreme events are likely to have long lasting impacts on communities around the world. The economic damage, the, has, the, the exposure to uh, hazardous air quality, the damage to property, the displaced animals and people are all gonna take months, in fact, years to recover. Beyond these visible impacts, these disasters are also taking a toll on people's mental and emotional health. People have been affected by such disasters, uh, including our first responders, experience stress, anxiety, and PTSD. Such extreme events are likely to continue and continue to have these impacts. A recent poll showed that about 72% of Americans believe that global warming is happening. This map shows a fraction of people across the US that believe that, climate change, that global warming is happening. Yet, only 56% believe that climate change is affecting them in some way. And the reason for that is because we, because we don't feel global warming. What we feel are the impacts of global warming through extreme events, like the ones I just talked about, which we typically attribute to being freak events. However, I will challenge you to think of the record heat record hot day that you've probably experienced because those, those, those heat, heat extremes are becoming more frequent. If you live in the Western US, you've been exposed to smoke from wildfires. If you live in the Northeast, 
you've probably experienced a snowmageddon recently. Uh, if you live in the Southeast or somewhere along the East Coast, you've probably, either you directly or someone that you know has experienced losses from a tropical storm or a hurricane. If you live in the Midwest, you've experienced a tornado or a severe storm or flooding. These events, they're different types of extreme events, but they're occurring across the US and across the world. So you might be wondering, well, these are just freak events. So how does climate change actually affect all of these events and how is it affecting me? So if you've experienced any of these, you've experienced climate change making these events worse. And I can tell you as a scientist that, I, that studies these extreme events, this is what we do. We look at these extreme events and understand how climate change influences them. So let me tell you what we found. What we found is that increasing emissions of greenhouse gases, um, which you've heard about already, have contributed, have, have a fingerprint on these extreme temperatures, on more severe storms, on uh, more severe droughts, on the increased risk of wildfires and rising sea levels that lead to record storm surges. So we're all feeling the impacts of these extreme events in some way or the other. And we're all kind of connected by that. But these impacts are not felt equally. So just a few days ago, a few weeks ago, when we had the worst air quality in Portland, which is where I live right now, I was able to seal up my house and sit inside being protected from the smoke. Just down the road from me, there were uh, people that were forced to work, laborers that were forced to work in an auto shop because they would not have um, earned their daily wages if they didn't. During a heat wave, I can, I can come home and turn the AC on and watch Netflix. There are, there are farm workers in California, in Oregon, in Washington that, that, that continue to work during these heat waves. There are rickshaw drivers in Delhi, a city where I grew up, where people continue to work during these conditions because they need to, to earn their daily wages. These two simple examples illustrate the, the different vulnerabilities we have in our society to these climate disasters. Within the US, indigenous communities and communities of color are most vulnerable to climate change disasters. These communities experience a higher rate, of, they experience higher rates of poverty. They tend to be living in fence line communities. They have less access to healthcare and they have jobs that increase their exposure to the environment. So when extreme events occur, these communities are typically the hardest hit. Climate change is amplifying the, the social inequalities that exist in our system, both in the US as well as globally. So what I've shown you is that climate change affects air quality because of smoke from wildfires. It affects our food supply because crops are often destroyed by flooding uh, events. It affects our water availability because it, it has made droughts worse. And a lot of these extreme events tend to cause massive, extensive uh, property damage and economic damages. Climate change also affects the natural habitat of several species that have been adversely affected by um, increasing extreme events and warming. And finally, it affects environmental injustices. And so if you care about anything that I have mentioned here, then you should care about climate change. So what's the point of talking about the problem if we can't offer solutions, right? As climate scientists, we, we, have, we have demonstrated the problem, but we have also used these climate models to understand what the world would look like in the future under dif different development scenarios to give us. So even though it doesn't tell us, these models don't tell us what to do, they provide us the information we need to make informed choices. And this is for ourselves and for our future generations because climate change is already affecting us today. So a future with increased greenhouse gas emissions, like we're doing today, will put us on this red line, which is a trajectory towards a world that's four degrees warmer than present. To put that in context, these, the severe wildfires, the, the intense record-breaking hurricanes that we've experienced in 2020, have been made worse by just one degree of climate change, 
which is how much the Earth has warmed since the beginning of the 20th century. Okay, an alternate future follows the blue line. That blue line puts us to about one degree warmer than, than we are right now. And that requires a transition to a cleaner carbon-free economy. Using technologies that exist today, we can get there with the technologies that exist today. But I believe it takes both individual and collective action. Individually, we can change, we, we need to change our behaviors. Things, simple things like changing our um, changing to energy efficient devices and conserving energy in our homes. Um, as well as maybe slightly harder things like giving up um, meat and transitioning to more uh, plant-based diets. These things can make a difference. These need to happen simultaneously with corporations and with governments transitioning to a fossil-free economy and supporting development in developing countries so that people there can enjoy the same basic resources that we take for granted here. As we actually have an opportunity right now, as we recover from COVID-19, to build this alternative future, with, in a, which will result in a climate that has much lower climate threats to the places, people, and animals we care about. The costs to make that transition are outweighed by the, 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 the estimated impacts of climate change as well as the avoided disasters, the billion dollar weather disasters that we've talked about. So I wanna leave you with a few key messages. Climate change is already affecting our lives today. It's not something that is only gonna affect our future generations. It's affecting multiple aspects of our lives. Greenhouse gases are primarily responsible for these increases. And because we know that, we know that we have a choice to pick a future that we want for ourselves and our future generations. So as a climate scientist, I'm often overwhelmed with grief from everything that is being lost as is because of the impacts of climate change. Yet I have hope because I think, I believe that we all want the same, the, the ultimately want the same thing, which is a cleaner and healthier planet um, with resources that we can all enjoy equally. Thank you.